in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. The brightest bulb may actually be in the ground, not in the sky. Today's show is all about flowering bulbs. In our first segment, we're going to be explaining the differences between summer flowering bulb care and spring flowering bulb care. Hear all about it. Up first. Once you get to know about what's the summer flowering bulbs, you're going to have to dig them up and store them over the winter. We'll tell you all about that during our second segment. Daffodils and narcissus are a spring flowering bulb in the same family. We'll share with you how to grow them in our third segment. Tulips are possibly the most popular of all bulbs. Listen in to how you can be successful with tulips in our fourth segment. Last but not least, these bulbs are the real pip. (laughs) That's a bulb joke. Uh, Somewhat lesser known bulbs like crocus, hyacinths are discussed in our final segment. So stay tuned. We'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome's triple action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So, the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Triple Action and expect to have the best-looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Too many yardeners. You get that? <laughs> yardeners and not necessarily gardeners. Bulbs are a mystery. They don't know what they are. They yeah. look like potatoes. <laughs> you know, there was a time when you could only plant cannibals, caladiums, or even elephant ears in late spring. Yeah. You didn't buy them as plants like we can today. So think about your options. You're very fortunate. Mm-hmm. But now what do you do at the end of the season? Oh my you know, so many customers come to plant tulips in the spring. Well, right. whoops, whoops, they need to be planted in the, in the fall, not when they're flowering. Anyway, so 
what do you do? I have, say, like caladiums. I have I have elephant ears growing in a pot that are oh, great, wow. big, gigantic. You know, Huge. those they look like elephant ears. Yeah. Um, all those flowering bulbs that were flowering in the summer are like almost a misnomer that are plants. And we're going to go over this thing. But spring flowering bulbs, mm. if you planted them in the fall and they bloom in the spring, you don't have to do nothing. The only thing that maybe consider is if tulips, you get about two good years out of tulips. Uh -huh. And then they got to be dug up, divided, and then you need to, to spread them out. Because what happens, they the bulbs divide and then they have all leaves. So if you have tulips that have been in for a while, that's what you need that's to do. do yeah. Daffodils, super easy. Oh, easy. Leave them alone. Yep. Just leave Don't them alone. Them. Don't touch them. Right. But it's the summer flowering bulbs that are are a challenge. And, and that again, think of think of canna lilies, dahlias, gladiolas, tuberous begonias, even. All of those used you know used to have to plant them as bulbs. Oh yeah. Yeah, never like never never flowers. But then again. We are uh, in a great age where we can oh, do all this stuff. Um, the varieties we have is incredible. It is. I mean, spring flowering bulbs, for instance, like people get confused. Like our iris. iris is Some good. iris mm -hmm. are spring flowering bulbs. But crocus, daffodils, tulips, hyacinths, mm -hmm. grape hyacinths, definitely, are all varieties of spring flowering bulbs. Those you can leave alone. But it's the other ones that you bought as a plant. Do you want to put the effort in to digging them out? We're gonna our next segment, which we're gonna go to pretty quick, is all about how to take those summer flowering bulbs and store them over the winter so that you can plant them in the spring rather than buy new plants. Right. So stay tuned. We're gonna be right back after this to talk about how to take care of those plants that are in your yard right now that you planted early, early summer or late spring. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Are you looking forward to a spring of vibrancy while using the best organically approved growing media for your annuals and vegetables? Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter has been created to set a diverse culture, ideal for germinating seeds and root cuttings. Created using the best ancient composting techniques and new age mixing devices, Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter gently combines kelp meal, worm castings, mycorrhizae, perlite, and sustainably harvested peat moss, establishing the most desirable setting to enhance new plant growth. Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter is available at these local retailers or visit www.coastofmaine.com to locate one near you. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. James, won't you turn that old iPad off and come on over here and listen to the radio with Pop Pop? I'm sure we can find something to listen to. Mm, okay. Let me see here. Let me see. It's going to be another scorcher mm -hmm. out here today. It's those doggone dog oh, days Lord. of summer with temperatures topping out in the hot God dog it made me drop my doggone coffee. Pop, Pop, what's the dog day? Well, James, it's funny that you ask that question because every dog has its day. And the dog days of summer is a magical time at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Where they've got the nerve, the unmitigated gall, you'll learn about those words a little bit later on, to slash prices all over the place. I'm talking crazy numbers here. $50 off all good Japanese maple trees. 
50% off all shade trees, camellias and oak leaf hydrangeas. Even all their fruit trees are 50% off. That's not all their nursery has to offer. 75% off French lilac hybrids. 75% off snow sprite cedar, tricolor willow, and enoki cypress. Meet petite knockout roses for $15.99 each or two for $25. To wrap up the dog days of summer with these possum blowout deals. You see what I did there? <laughs> I guess that bloomer's pop up. You're barking up the right tree. <laughs> You've been hanging around your pop up for too long. You're starting to sound just like me. I, I see what you did there, young man. For more information, check out bloomers.com. You've got to see this place. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Now that fall is here, it's time to store those summer flowering bulbs and roots or, or let them rot in the ground. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any planted at your house? Summer, no. I, you know, I never planted any. Well, so you, well, no, I mean, like what happens is like tuberous begonias. No tuberous right. begonias, uh, right? right? No, I, well, iris are both. Mm-hmm. They're really a, a spring and summer, but they're hardy. Mm-hmm. And that's where we get into hardy, hardiness. hardiness. Yeah. We're talking about things that are not hardy, mm-hmm. that are cold sensitive to freeze. Like, for instance, we've got a a quick list here of different bulbs that that are actually probably purchased as plants and you may not be aware so for instance caladiums caladiums are those big leaves and white or red and that they are hardy to zone nine we're zoned anywhere between five and seven in our listening area those if you want to try to save them you can Calla lilies, they're like borderline. There are seven, and, and some people get them to come back because of the way that they have them up against the house or closer into a warmer area. But in our zone five, they'll rot in the ground. Dahlias, all of our listening area, they are not hardy. They are not hardy. Elephant ear bulbs, they're zone nine, not hardy. Gladiolas, again, zone eight, not hardy. Tuberous begonia, zone 10, not hardy. But you can save them and you can hold them basically in a dormant state over the winter and they they will end up being, most of them are bulbs or their roots. Um, and let's take a few examples here of what we're talking about. Um, probably the, the first thing we start with, gladiolas are, are a traditional bulb and, and Probably you put them in the ground as a bulb. We don't have many gladiolas or some new dwarf ones. But what happens, as a grower, they they'll, they want to have a good shelf life and a good presence so that they're an impulse item when you go to the garden center. So you say, oh, wow, look how beautiful. And gladiolas are a little bit tall and lanky, and they sometimes need support. They, they are working on some dwarf varieties that may look better in a pot. Mm. But if you have gladiolas... You know, there are some things you don't want to do. You, you want to, first of all, you need to, to, to raise them. Some, some where do you see it called lifting? And you'll take a, uh, a digging fork, you know, which is different than a, than a pitchfork. Do you have a digging fork in your arsenal of tools? I had one. I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I lost it. Rip. Man, Julio. I mean. <laughs> I, got, I got through you tools. You lost it? Is it rusted somewhere? <laughs> Probably. Man. Uh, I get angry about how the tools are taken care of bloomers. No respect. No respect. But a digging fork is just that. It's like a flat, very uh, rigid fork, but where it allows the soil to go through and it goes into the ground easy. And what you're going to do, bend it up, lift up those that clump, and you're going to separate the the actual stems of the gladiolas because that's where the bulbs are attached. You need to let them kind of cure. We, we talked about potatoes uh, and onions not too long ago. And you got to let them cure. And it's not long. You just let them dry out in the sun for a couple of days. And then you cut off the stems, brush off the soil. And you'll. this is a theme with most of these that, you'll, that we're talking about. Um, you're going to just clean them up to get so that they, uh, you're going to snap the bulb off. And it's almost like a cup where that bulb, that bulb is. It's, it looks a little bit like a flat potato. Okay. And you're going to snap it at the base of, of the leaves. And again, you're going to take them and they need to be kept in a cool spot. And I don't know, most people, this is where it, it gets tough. Cool, dry spot. And it needs to be around 45 degrees. 
And if you can hang them up where, you know, here we go back to stockings again. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. use stockings or if you are lucky enough to have like those mesh onion bags, they're perfect. And it's best to, to keep them in the dark, but you don't want them to rot. That if you go in, if you're worried about like thrips can get in, it can be a problem. You can use, oh, here you go, old Lysol. A tablespoon of Lysol to a gallon of water, just soak them in for about six hours. You know, that can kill the thrips. Uh, probably best to do it before you plant them in the spring because thrips will just kill the kill the plant and it makes it makes has it causes a lot of problems and not only in gladiolus but other things caladiums we were talking about caladiums earlier same type of thing you're going to pull them up let them dry out and again you need to do this you can do it right after a frost but you can't leave them store them outside um, they need they need it's more consistent to what our home heating temperature is so you get to the to the root mass, and and you'll find that that there that there is a, a root to them. You get the soil off, mm -hmm. and then you're going to store them in vermiculite or peat moss. And I suggest putting them in a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. There's a little air circulation that gets through cardboard, but it also absorbs some of that moisture, so you don't have them the the ability for them to rot. If you put them like in a sealed plastic mm -hmm. bag, forget it. You'll have like a Gooey mush, Ooh. brown, <laughs> yeah. disgusting smelling. Yeah, you know, everybody's um, had a rotted onion yeah. in their house. That, that's, that's what you'd have. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then again, it's uh, you're gonna clean that off and and just store them. They, they're gonna. St you're thinking that it's like, well, don't they need water? Don't they need no, no. They're going dormant. They're gonna be in like suspended animation, and that the roots will form and grow in the spring after you plant them, but you've got to keep them in that way where it's in a cool 60 degrees and you're going to, again, keep them in a uh, dark area. And, and the key is is just cooler, don't disturb them, leave them alone. You can check them every once in a while. That goes with all your boys. Now, what about elephant ears? Can, can we go back a little bit on that? Go ahead. Uh, now, when you're, when you're storing these, you know, you got the bulbs, right, all set to go and you got to put them in the box bulbs are roots right yep and uh you're going to put them in the box right right now should you you don't want them touching each other or do no you? no you want to keep them keep want to keep them separate oh, okay so that way that if if they overlap and touch sometimes that that will form like a rot, rot. in that air er, those areas so you want to avoid that keep that so definitely separating definitely keep them separated um, those gigantic elephant ears. Oh gosh! I mean, it's amazing that they grow from that. You know, the big thing looks like a you know a soft coconut. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, but to be able to, to save them from the, they're going to be even bigger next year. Mm. Again, perfect weather for it, for temperature for inside, uh, seventy degrees, mm -hmm. and you're going to after the 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 first frost and the tops start dying back, dig them up. And leave them in the sun to dry for a few days. Make sure that we're not going to get any freezing temperatures. Then brush off the, sto the soil and just get it back to that bulb. And you're going to cut the, the, the foliage off at the top of the bulb and put it in again. It's vermiculite or you're going to use peat moss. And the whole idea is you want it dry because you, you, you want to keep them suspended. You don't want them growing. And if it's in the dark... You know, everybody's had also like you, I have. I had garlic. I went to go use my garlic, and it started growing. Oh wow! And that—that's what you're trying to avoid. Oh, and by yeah. keeping it in the dark, that will help that. And and by keeping it dry, that will help that. C can you keep it in the garage, or is that too? Cold? It's too cold. It's too, you, you know, if you're if you 50? have a if you have like have unheated garage, heated garage where it doesn't get below freezing, yeah, sure. Okay. But I know my garage. My, it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold in <laughs> January. Yeah. So, and, and take a look. Like you know, it's almost you want to check on your Sleeping Beauties to see how they're doing. If if they are beginning to rot, or one of them is is starting to to rot, you you've got to get rid of it mm. because you don't want to have that. Like, you know, one bad apple. You know, this, this, yeah. one bad apple spoils the whole, the whole barrel. Thing. Yeah. The whole idea behind that is that ethylene gas that apples, rotting apples or rotting bulbs give off makes the other ones rot as well. So they use ethylene gas to ripen fruit and ripen oh. tomatoes and ripen bananas and, and do all that stuff. So um, it's something to consider. Mm -hmm. 
But again, give it a try. I mean, it, nothing's more satisfying than not having to to buy a thirty dollar elephant ear. Wow! And that you know you can tell your friends and neighbors and family. Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> See this? That's a green thumb. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I I saved my elephant ear year after year. Yeah. <laughs> so <It> come back. <laughs> give it a try. Uh, it. It's not as easy as just leaving them in the ground like your spring flowering bulbs, but it certainly is more rewarding. It is. Um, back in the day, I used to do this with geraniums oh, too, yeah. Yeah. but uh, yeah. there aren't many people that are doing it. You no, they're not. Got to do this kind of the same thing. They got to dry upside down. Oh, there's yeah. there's a root mass, and it's kind of, yeah. uh, I don't know, yeah. pretty hard. If anybody yeah. is interested in how to save their geraniums from year to year, mm -hmm. please contact yeah, the hotline. Yeah, the awesome. hotline number is 609-685-1880. Uh, we'll, we'll tell you all about it. We'd love to get you on air, too, and get you a free T-shirt. awesome, yeah. There. All right. We're going to be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers Home and Garden Center invites you to our largest event of the season. Join us November 17th at 5 p.m. for our annual holiday preview party, Open House. Enjoy food, drinks, and live entertainment. Did I mention generous holiday savings? We'll be unveiling the latest in-home holiday decor and ornaments, including the Santa's Kindness Interactive Ornament. It's all going down November 17th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. For more information, check us out at bloomers.com. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. Want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomers has a huge flock of feeders, birdhouses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomer stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I have a little cold, Julio. Did you oh, know you did? that? No, yeah. I did. Yeah, I don't want to get you sick. That's all right. Anyway, all right, good. See what I care. Uh, anyway, <laughs> daffodils are also Narcissus family. And they're, it's a big family of bulbs. And I think they're like some of the happiest and cheeriest because they're some of the most early Earliest. bulbs there are. Yeah. Easy, awesome. easy, easy. Just you, the recipe for spring flowering bulbs is first of all, you have to plant them. Frost, it's not a big deal because they're underground. You can wait till your annuals get that frost and then you rip them up and you put them in the compost and then you go ahead and go behind and you can plant your daffodils or your tulips or, or whatever. But narcissus and daffodils, where they are the early flowers say, hey, look, it's spring. Spring time. Welcome to spring. It's really here. And, and I love that. When, there are so many people that like, I, I see people that buy a new house uh -huh. and that people before them have planted daffodils yeah. and then all, they still come up year after year. And that I think to, to like younger homeowners, it's like, it's amazing. It's like, you know, some little 
you know, Munchkin came and planted them in the ground. Yeah. And it's like, it's a miracle. Oh, yeah, it is. I have a clump at home. It's been there since I was a teenager. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> that still- was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you. You're welcome. There's hope for you. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, where, where daffodils to me uh, are like a true perennial bowl. They sometimes need to be split, but not like tulips, where tulips will stop flowering if they're they're too tight together. And the the one thing to remember about daffodils, first of all, you, you plant them if you're looking for because you see them at Easter, and and you're spending money, you know, on daffodils at Easter to plant in the ground. You're a knucklehead because you can get. I mean, right here we we have fifteen uh, daffodil bulbs, right there. Mm-hmm. 12 bucks. That's it. A pot of t- of maybe five daffodil bulbs is like at least $12 or more, maybe 20 yeah. So make sure you're planting all of your spring flowering bulbs, tulips, crocus, hyacinths, daffodils, narcissus, in this time of the year. Right now. That's right. Right now is the time to go. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also, it's like, you'll read on the packs, oh, they need full sun. Oh. Daffodils mm-hmm. do need full sun. When they're coming up. But if you have trees, there's no leaves on those trees. So you're yeah. getting sun on your daffodils. Mm-hmm. They'll come up and bloom and be under your trees and look great. Oh, wow. So don't worry about planting them under trees because you think you have shade. Mm-hmm. They'll do just fine. Um, don't plant them where it's wet. Okay. Yeah. They like it uh, to be somewhat on the dry side. If, the, if it's wet, the bulbs can, uh, can rot. And here's a big fancy horticulture word. <laughs> All those spring flangles need vernalization. vernalization. <laughs> <laughs> I had one and the wheels fell off. Oh, yeah? No. <laughs> that uh, vernalization <laughs> is a process where it needs cold, a cold period, in order to bloom. Uh-huh. So some people that bring in their tulips, they say, oh, I'm going to plant some inside. Like, they never bloomed. It's because they never had that chill, right. the vernalization that they require in order to bloom. And there are also nursery plants that are like that. Um, deer resistant. So if you've got a deer problem, there you go. Put them in. Mm-hmm. They're not going to eat them. They're going to look at them and say, "Oh, look how pretty." Mm-hmm. Um, and again, they are beautiful until they start to die back. <laughs> okay, yeah. back. So yeah. you have them in the spring. They're beautiful. They're flowering, and then the flowers fall off, and then you have those stems, and then it starts turning yellow. It's what they're supposed to do. Uh, unlike other plants, they go dormant in the summer. They don't go dormant in the winter. They, you know, they're because they're grown underneath the ground a little bit. Mm-hmm. But they go dormant in the summer, and you, you have to let that energy go back into the bulb. I think of it this way: it's like, you know, shooting, and then when they're done flowering, the fountain goes back into the pool of water, and that's kind of what's happening with your spring flowering bulbs, where all that flower power is is shooting up and and looking glorious and then it's done and all that energy has to slowly go back into the bulb and tulips will do it where but daffodils some people cut their daffodils back and it and it hurts the bulb so you got to leave them go yellow um it used to be an old practice where people would fold them them and they'd fold them up and they'd put a rubber band around them so that way they couldn't be seen by the plants like that were in front of them so Always, you know, want to plant them more towards the background, not not towards the front, because that foliage has to go completely yellow before you can cut it back. So, again, you want it to go yellow and dry before you, you color it out. But make sure when you go planting them, you can't just, like, put them in the ground and say, I'm done. You want to give them a spoma bulb tone. I like a spoma bulb tone better than uh, bone meal. Bone meal is good, but a spoma bulb tone has a wider range of elements that feed that bulb. And all of your bulbs, if you have existing bulbs, you want to put that on there because you want to do everything you can to help those bulbs produce that flower. And again, it does come from a bulb, but again, the energy in the bulb has to be put there. And these plants, they divide and that the, the bulbs divide and that you want to make sure that when you're feeding your bulbs with a spoma bulb tone, that it gives them that extra oomph so that they become new flowering plants, not just leaves. And that will absolutely help. Awesome. Anything to add, Hul? Yeah. 
You can also naturalize these if you have an area like, you know. What does that mean? Like, you know, you just randomly put them in an area that you're not using and uh, it'll look really beautiful there. Yeah. You know, rather than having an empty spot that you never really have anything to do with. Some people put them in their lawns. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I had a professor say, what you do is you take them and just throw them up in the air, and wherever they land, that's where you plant them. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I, <laughs> I was like, oh, that uh, sounds great. Yeah. You know? <laughs> How many are there? <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> I, I, but I think, like you're saying, you can naturalize uh, yeah. them where what will happen is like yours that have been there since you were a kid mm -hmm. that – and now they're – how big around? Oh, my gosh, saying? yeah. You were just saying. About, you can't see. Yeah. We're on radio. Yeah, right. I'd say it about three feet wide. <laughs> Those three feet? It's so, a big, it's a big so clump. So a big amount of three foot, yeah. and it probably started with just a couple of couple, bulbs. Yeah, it probably right. started with an Easter plant. Yeah, <laughs> That's probably, probably what it did. did. Yeah. 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 And it's only taken 30-some years to, yeah, to, to get, get that there. Point. <laughs> but uh, that's one thing. Don't skimp. Plant a bunch. Yeah, you like know, thousands. Don't, like, plant <laughs> one bulb here, one bulb here. Plant a... Just plant a, a bunch of them together right. and so that you have little islands of color in the springtime. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the bulbs that we carry are like they're mixed bulbs. Like the narcissus and daffodil combination that we have is, is not just daffodils where narcissus will have like double flowers and that they'll be a little bit smaller. Paper whites are a type of narcissus, uh, very fragrant. Mix it up. Mm -hmm. Mix it up, but you want to make sure that they bloom at the same time. You don't want to go and plant necessarily, you know, bulbs that that bloom at different times unless you do the lasagna method, mm -hmm. where the lasagna method is where you have layers of bulbs. So you start with the early bulbs on the bottom, then on top of that, you put the, the next zone. And all the packages are clearly marked to say when is their bloom time, mm -hmm. early spring, mid spring, mid spring. And that again, you want to do that lasagna method. So early spring first, then that, then it will be the the mid spring, and then late spring, and then you'll have things where it'll change it up a little bit, and you'll be able to hide that yellowing foliage with the new bulbs that are coming up. Awesome. But you always want it to be a little bit taller too. So shortest bulbs early spring, which is most of the time it's natural, and then the next ones are a little bit taller, so it hides that underneath and. One thing that I love, we're going to talk about tools, but in the next segment, mm -hmm. but I just love having pansies at the base of tulips. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> but that's our next segment. Yeah. So time for a break. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five. 1880, and we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready to use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumneytown Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? 
Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Tulips are the most popular bulb in the country. Yes, they are. Easy to grow, but need to be planted before it gets cold. I mean, freezing cold. <laughs> Ground frozen. Yeah. You're Mr. Temperature of the Soil. Yeah. Did you look at what the temperature of the soil is today? No, I no, missed I that didn't. No, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I got to get back on it. So the thing is, is that, again, fertilization. Fertilization. God, he's so smart. <laughs> Good looking, too. Don't go to YouTube. Uh, anyway, so... Fertilization, again, it, it's what's required. Like tulips need 12 to 14 weeks of cold, mm. and it's below 55 degrees, so it's not like, you know, freezing temperatures. Right. But again, your refrigerator. I, I want to do a test. I have a planter right. box. Uh-huh. I want to take tulips, a bag of tulips, put it in my refrigerator. Uh-huh. That'll be great. Waking. <laughs> Midnight snack. <laughs> you know, oh, this thing tastes terrible. Um, but uh, well, that, there's another. There, but to try to, to see if by keeping them in my refrigerator, a bag of tulips, if you know, and that honestly, the bulb growers. Here's a trade secret. The guys that you buy your Easter bulbs from, or or what have you, that they put their bulbs on racks and store them in like a cooler. The same like, you know, you, you bring in vegetables like lettuce and stuff like that and it comes in and there's a cooler and right. same thing. Same thing. They huh? do wow. they they will store the they will store the bulbs in there and then bring them out when it's time to force them. And there's a whole schedule on so that Easter's never the same time every year. So they bring them out in a certain amount of time so that they force them into bloom. Awesome. So that's pretty cool. Tulips definitely mm-hmm. need uh vernalization. You'll see you'll see some packages where it'll say, you know, great for, you know, for, for sprouting indoors. Those are okay. They don't require the vernalization. Again, vernalization is that fancy word that just basically means they need to have the cold of winter to force them into bloom in the spring. Mm-hmm. So Maybe. tulips, tulips. We plant 7,000 tulips in front of bloomers. Yes, we do. That's right. That's right. Awesome. I, I'm a Dutchman. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> I'm actually more German than I am Dutch, German. but again, got some Dutch. My again. grandmother's name was Van Bremen. Oh yes, that's Dutch. That's that is yeah. Dutch. That is Dutch. Yeah. My late wife was pure, pure Dutch. Pure Dutch. Oh, oh she really was. Wow. Pure Dutch. She loved those tulips. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> tulips. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, again, so that makes my kids like they're super. They're more Dutch than I am. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So anyway. You want tulips planted in full sun. Here's that trick again. But trees that get leaves in late spring are not shaded when the tulips are blooming. So you can plant tulips underneath trees. Awesome. And it is awesome because it all, often it's a, you know, it's like a dead area. It, it when, when you look at trees that don't have any leaves on it and all of a sudden there's tulips coming up and pinks or w- even like a blend of pink and white or, or you know, just bright, bright yellow. I mean, it's, hey, it's springtime. Look, yeah, yeah. look, yeah. look, mm-hmm. you know, um, so nothing's sad. better. Oh, yeah. Nothing's better. Yeah. You can't yeah. have a wet area. They don't like to be in, in wet areas. They, again, bulbs rot pretty easy. Um, they like a well-draining soil, neutral pH, you know, they're, that's easy, you know, it, and again, if, when you plant them, you want to go and use a Spoma bulb tone. A Spoma is the best fertilizer company in the country. I don't care what anybody says Mm -hmm. that if you want to have a debate, call that hotline (laughs) 609-685-1880. We're going to dock some fertilizer. Um, (laughs) But again, a spoma bulb tone. Look, look for that every time you're planting bulbs. Even the bulbs that you know where they are, you want to feed them with a spoma bulb tone. It gives that energy into the bulb. Now, 
The one drawback on tulips is you get about two years out of flowering. Like I said, we plant four, like 7,000 bulbs around bloomers of tulip bulbs. We get the first year is unbelievable. It's like, oh, you know, people amazing. slow down when they go yeah. past with them. What is that? <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're supposed to come in and buy stuff. But, <laughs> but anyway, that, that I, I'm proud when people come in just to, oh, yeah, to take like pictures that. of the tulips. Mm -hmm. um, and that the next year, they're not as full and luxurious as they were that first year. And the third year, forget it. They're all, they're all leaves for the most mm -hmm. part. Because what happens is the bulb divides. So it basically gets cut in half and then they become bulblets. And the way that you get more tulips is that you plant the smaller bulbs and they grow into the full size bulb that you plant the first time you did it. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, that gets a little much. A little tough. Uh, so we do, we rip them out and mm -hmm. compost them. Mm -hmm. You know, we bring them to the recycler and that, that it basically rots down and they turn into Organic what matter. people call, <laughs> they basically call topsoil. Um, but again, it's, it's tulips are so many different colors, so different as oh, far as they could be coming up in March or they could be coming up in late May. They could be short stems. They could be tall stems. I love tulips. Oh, Colors great. as wide as the rainbow. Mm -hmm. There are blends that, that we have, like the daffodils we spoke about, where there are different blends of colors. Like, Julio, is this the There's blend? Yeah, blend. like, here we go. It's it's they, like the purity and pink blend. Pink Obviously, pink. it's pink. Yeah. But it's different shades of pink with a little bit of, of white to, to bring out the other colors. Wow. It's a lot. And, and go to your – look, go to your local garden center. They have fresh bulbs. If you go to Home Depot, you go to Lowe's to buy your bulbs, they sit them right by the front door where the heater is. Yep, the it. heater's Dries blowing on those bulbs, drying them out, and then you get home. And what you have is something that's more like a potato chip because you squeeze it and it's all crunchy. <laughs> Yeah. They're not supposed to be that way. Crunchy tulips. Yeah, you know, <laughs> crunchy tulips and light bulbs never grow. And then people, it, it again goes to that brown thumb. Might be good on salad, though. Crunchy, 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 crunchy tulips. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I've got a little thing for you. you don't eat the stamen. Tulips, bulbs can be eaten, okay, but they're nominally toxic. Hmm. That uh, 1944, 1945, during the Second World War, uh, occupied Nether the Netherlands or the Holland. The Germans were there and that uh, there was a famine. They were eating the, the bulbs. Whoa. And that like they had, you have to cook them in a certain way. I don't, uh, I don't suggest it. Okay. But it was, uh, it was a big deal. It, it, it was a, the, you know, they... Like you hear about the Irish, you know, this was, you know, basically caused by by the occupation uh, during World War II. It, it was a nasty time. Mm. Wow. Uh, another thing, the first economic bubble. Huh. Okay. We're talking. Okay. Here we are. CNBC. CNBC. 1593. Okay. Tulips were introduced to Holland. And the best tulip bulbs worth a thousand dollars, and like it's it was like Bitcoin, you know. <laughs> there's there's that guy Sam with the bad hair. Oh. <laughs> What's that dude's name? Anyway, so they like so all of a sudden, like the they said, what the heck? That's a stupid tulip bulb for <laughs> Turkey. You know? So what happened ended up happening is that the, like people lost. It was unbelievable. They were selling for for for. 10,000 guilders, which was equal to a mansion in the middle of Amsterdam. Oh, man. But uh, the, what ended up happening is that they said, you know, that people got their senses back together and they realized. And then here they go back like, all right, let's go, you know, two, let's go. How, how long are we going? We're going uh, 400, 400 years, years later, right. you know, That's 350 forward. years That's later forward, and we're going to eat them right. because we're dying. It's, it, it's amazing. Um, tulip bulbs, they, they, you're le what, how, how many years have you been married? I've been married 10 years. 10 years? Yep. Next year, Tulip uh, is the 11th. It's the 11th one. Yep. There you go. That does yeah. get you out way cheap. Here, babe. Hey. No jewelry. I hey, got let's go play. Hey, hey, we'll see you in the garden, Charmaine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you are the best. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't do that. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, uh, anyway, um, so tulips, plant them. And, and it's it's really important to, to make sure that you don't cut the foliage back. They will dry pretty quick, 
and the leave the stems, you're going to leave them go that they leave like, um, it's almost like a rose hip on a rose, but it'll leave the top stem where, where it pollinates uh, in that where you can snap that off while it's still green. But don't take the foliage down. Let that, again, the big fountain flowers a fountain, and then it goes back into the bulb after it dries out, and then you're done. You can take it off. It's like a little bit of a twist when it's dry. Once it's dry, it's a little bit of a twist, and you just pull it off and pull that stem off. But you've got to let them go yellow and dry out so that you have great tulips next year. If you cut them, you know, if you just go and you take a weed whacker and cut them down, guess what? you're going to have no flowers next year because that encourages them to split and divide. So again, let them go brown, plant something else in front of it, leave some gaps. And listen, if your bulbs are done and you have them where you can plant your annuals right on top of them, your bulbs stay dormant until the following fall, or I'm sorry, the following spring. So you can plant your annuals right on top of them. And that we do that all the time. I mean, if you've ever been by bloomers, you know that there's a whole bunch of annuals out there. They're right on top of our tulip bulbs. So something to do. Plant your bulbs. Go to your local garden center. Get your bulbs. Because, again, mail order, you never know what you're getting. It's all about that there are different grading and different where there are different sizing for bulbs. Like, all the garden centers have top size bulbs, which mean they're going to produce the best flowers. You can go online and say, wow, I could put 100 tulip bulbs for, you know, 59 cents. Yeah. And what they are is they're bulbless and they're not going to flower. So go to your local garden center, pay a little bit extra, but get what you want and get what you need. And also, again, your local garden center has the experience to help you do it right. All right. Exciting. Enough said. Yeah. All right. We'll be back in the garden for our final segment right after this. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Are you looking to reach an audience of over 12 million residents in the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley, and New York City tri-state? Then consider becoming a broadcast sponsorship partner for Bloomers in the Garden. Every week on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, your products become associated with the authority in everything lawn, landscape, and garden. For more information on the Bloomers in the Garden partnership program, feel free to call the hotline 609-685-1880 or check out the radio tab at bloomers.com. Customers. We're back. <laughs> We're John. We're John about bulbs. <laughs> you know, there are some flowering bulbs that need an honorable mention, uh, yeah. and that they are crocus, hyacinths. Um, they're not just Easter flowers, too, folks. Bulbs are not Easter flowers. And that's what we were talking about, where people see bulbs at Easter, or they see their neighbor has all these bulbs and coming up and then they un and say oh, oh you know what do you have any bulbs it's like yeah. you should have bought them in the, mm -hmm. in the fall bowl, bowl. because you end up paying maybe a quarter yeah. compared to paying like ten dollars for five bulbs you're paying a quarter for a bulb 
But hyacinths are the real, real fragrant in different colors, usually pink, purple, and white. Um, there also is a yellow. Aaron's making me, if you want to look on YouTube, please take a look because you'll see me holding up a hyacinth package and that where there are different colors and that, uh, again, it's it doesn't look like these all look like potatoes, okay? They really do. But it's miraculous when they come and they're growing. Some of these can be forced in, indoors, but uh, iris, that's another one that, that often are bought as plants. But again, you plant, I'm holding it up. So if you go to our YouTube channel, this is a bearded iris. This is what you get. And that little thing will sprout and bloom unbelievably in the spring. And again, it's a it's a bearded iris, and it doesn't look like much, but yeah. it is. You know, you're paying in a pot probably twenty dollars for this, where you know it's a quarter of that when you're buying it as a bulb. So make Amazing. sure you're getting out into your local garden center and perusing that bulb aisle because it's yeah. not just tulips and daffodils. There's other things too. Fennel mm -hmm. onions. Oh, I have them at home. You have them at home. Oh, they're great. They're great. Oh, my gosh. They taste good. Showstoppers. Showstoppers. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and, and most people know that as Allium. Uh -huh. um, Gladiator yeah. is probably the most popular. They're the ones that are probably about four feet tall. The, they awesome. are about the size, maybe a little smaller than a basketball. Mm -hmm. But they get to be gigantic flowers. And, and they, they, They're awesome. they are awesome. They are awesome. And, and they've done some really great work with it where there's a variety called millennial that millennial, we yeah. only sold not as bulbs but have sold as a plant and it looks uh, terrific they had it uh planted in one of the um it was yards brewery had them planted it was in a mass planting it was, awesome. it was great hmm. uh snowdrops uh -huh. snowdrops are the first flowering bulb hmm. um here you go for a l little background uh gala okay because because of again the botanical name let's get let's get plant geek on you uh, Gallianthus, okay. Gallianthus. Navalis, okay. Not the, I thought it was funny that the medical pill that they have, Navalis, I don't, I'm not even sure what it does. <laughs> anyway, Gala is Greek for milk. Anthos is Greek for flower. And Navalis is Latin for snow covered. So snowdrops are tiny little plants. They're only about three to six inches tall. They have little white flowers awesome. that are bell shaped. And, and that, it's uh, they're leafless. They don't. It's just a stalk with the the flower on it, and again, it's early, early, early. So we're talking about the beginning of March, wow. and it is and it is a, it is great because you, it's a joy to see. It's a celebration when you see these flowers blooming. Grape hyacinths are another one. Um, I have a big mound of grape hyacinths that are that are where uh, we pull into our driveway, and, and that there's a big mound and, and that I have never touched it in 15 years and it just Still continues there. to grow wow. and continue to grow a little about six inch tall blue uh, flowers and again it is it is easy to grow that's something that you could naturalize if you wanted um, and again around trees you know don't just plant one bulb please you know you're gonna plant 10 or so but when it comes right down to what, what would be your last word about planting bulbs? Uh, planting bulbs, plant bulbs because, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, we want to have that color starting early because that what's, that's what cheers us up. It, it, it's a health uh, motivator too. You know, it makes it you is. happy. You know, and excited about you know life and uh, it just it is an incredible thing. It is. It's it's like a rebirth when yeah, you see is. bulbs starting to come up. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. All right, well, I couldn't add any more. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. 
Is she gone? Nope, she's still standing there. What is she doing? I think she's watching the grass grow. <gasps> That's our job. I know, right? She's watching the grass grow, the flowers grow. Ooh, look, the trees are growing. I can't say as I blame her. Remember where she bought all this stuff? Duh, bought us there too. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Find us online at bloomers.com. Julio down by the school yard. Me and Julio. Uh, All, right. All right. Go get your bulbs. Yeah. Don't skimp. No. Make sure you <laughs> plant a large amount. Don't plant just two bulbs. Go and get 25 or 30. You'll make an impact that, that oh. I mean, all, your neighbors, your friends, yeah. your family will say, my gosh, they're beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. Listen, if you have a question about bulbs or anything else in the garden, would you please call the hotline, 609-685-1880. Leave us your question, and we'll call you back with the answer. And if you make it on the show, we'll get you a T-shirt. That's right. We'll get you, a lot <laughs> yeah. of T-shirts are out there, oh, aren't yeah. there, all? Oh, there's plenty. Yeah. If you are a little bit shy and you want to text, mm-hmm. that's Go okay, ahead. too. Yep. But we'd honestly rather have you call. Mm-hmm. If you want to listen to uh, Bloomers in the Garden anytime, you can search on your uh, favorite podcasting platform or go to bloomers.com. When you visit your favorite uh, garden center, tell them you listen to Bloomers in the Garden. Aaron, Sam, thank you. We'll see you next week right here in the garden. See you in the garden.